Do you want me to just start talking? Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I can. I, I just didn't know. I didn't know. You want me to kick it off? Be like, hey. So our first presentation tonight will be from Human Resources, Office of Human Resources, and the lovely Amy Workman will be your presenter tonight. Thank you so much. You can, you can fun now and later, it doesn't matter. The jury is fine as well. Um, well, good evening. I'm Amy Workman. I'm the Human Resources Recruiting and Training Manager. So I work here in City Hall on the fourth floor, and I'm going to talk to you while you dine about what Human Resources does for the city and what our team looks like. So, like I said, we are located on the fourth floor. You can come up and visit us. Of course, we need a badge to do so. But uh, we share the floor with Parks and Rec. And for anyone who's ever watched Parks and Rec, they are sort of a little bit like what you see on TV. Um, but we have fun on our side, too. Everyone jokes that human resources people don't have fun. But there's about 10 of us, and I would say at least five of us are a good time. So, um, what we do, so what we provide a service. Obviously, our customers are internal. Um, but they are also external as well. So our customers, our primary customers, are our employees, and that's who we serve. And as you have learned over your weeks, we have about 700 plus employees that we um, try to provide services for. Um, we are a small team for so many employees. There are 10 of us, legit, 10, 9 to 11, depending on our moods and how many personalities show up. Um, <laughs> but, uh, we are a, a small team, but we are mighty. So we have two of us in recruiting and training. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the employment, how people apply for jobs in the city, and how we focus our hiring. We have a um, classica classification and comp analyst, which when we hired her, we said, thank goodness, because nobody wants that job. Um, dealing with numbers and uh, all that all day long. We have one benefits coordinator for the entire city, and that's for our active employees and our retired employees as well. So she's always very busy. We have one city nurse, and our city nurse provides um, services, everything from a cut that can come for band-aids, we have biofreeze for sore muscles, and of course, normal clinic stuff like drug testing for our employees and, and pre-employment physicals and getting those coordinated. We also have a payroll specialist that works with payroll and accounting um, on the sixth floor. We have Tracy Walsh, who's our human resources manager. And then we have Edward Sisson, who is hanging out in the back, and he's our chief human resources officer. So he is my boss. Um, but I don't really want him to know that, so if you keep that on the down. So those are the things that we are responsible for. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my area, which is recruiting and training. Uh, we have a website, which I'm thinking you would have seen by now. Trudy's going to talk to you from Tech Resources in a little while. But cityofpensacola.com is our main website. And on that website, you can access our jobs. There's tab exciting tabs where you can go to the Tech Resources um, Department or the Human Resources Office uh, and look at that. But and back then, I had this book called What Color Is Your Parachute? And it was all about, yes, yes, yes. And that edition in 2006 was all about go knock down the doors that you want, take your resumes, and you go meet people. That is not how you find a job anymore. It is all online. So a lot of businesses don't even look at resumes anymore. Um, so when people at job fairs come up and say, well, here's my resume, I always take it and I look at it. But really, if someone wants a uh, job with the city of Pensacola, they're probably going to have to apply online for it. We post our jobs on Friday afternoon at 4 p.m. and they run for 10 days minimum and they close at midnight on the 10th business day. So Friday at 11.59, we pull them. We try to process all of our applications that following Monday. And so myself and my uh, one employee, Natalie, we are the gatekeepers of applications. So what we're doing is just screening for minimum qualifications, making sure the applicants are qualified, and then we route them to what we call our hiring managers. So the department or offices that are doing the hiring. Um, we do not accept paper applications. We do have two computers up on the fourth floor for people who may not have access to a computer, and we will gladly help walk people through that. Um, our, job, our, our job website is now mobile friendly as well, so you can apply from your phone or your tablet with ease. Um, when you go to our website, this is what the jobs look like. You'll see the job title. And you'll see the details. 
And the details are important because right now we're working on it, but sometimes our jobs are internal only. So it would say, this job is currently open to Pensacola Police Department active employees only. We want that to go away so my, our external customers don't see jobs that they can't have, right? Um, but any details are there. We try to include the minimum starting salary so people have an idea how long it's going to run, if there are any certain um, special qualifications for the job. All of that is listed there. Um, everything, as you know, we are public records, so everything, all of our job classifications are listed on our human web website as well. What are your questions? Yes. You, uh, the police particularly commented on they're chronically shorthanded and have trouble filling their jobs. What are you... For our recruitment efforts? Yes. So police and fire um, are both sometimes hard to hire for. Right now with police, I think a lot of it is what's going on with the atmosphere of police, right? It's scary to be a police officer. And in our community, a lot of people, I know that our police are taking active. They have coffee with cops, um, getting out there in the community, going to schools, trying to recruit. We are working with Workforce Escarosa or Career Source Escarosa um, to try to bring on um, cadets, because we have a cadet program. Um, our fire academy just started their cadet program back again. We offered six scholarships to people in the community that pay for the fire academy and are also city employees while they're going to school. So it's a, a huge benefit um, because what they wanted there were people from the community that are going to stay in the community and they really invest. Sometimes you go to the academy and you go somewhere else in Cal or South Florida or anywhere. Um, but it's always a struggle. With a cadet program, do they go through the same sort of screening? Yes. Yes, so for both fire and police, um, they'll go through a background check above and beyond, like what I got, um, above and beyond that same screening drug and alcohol, and then again, when they come on as a police officer, they update their medical history and go through some of that again. So to become a fire cadet, um, it was really up to us, and we did some benchmarking with other fire cadet academies to see how they were doing it across the country, um, because we wanted to Make something that was fair, again, because we want a, a diverse men and women, and so you, you talk about the physical aptitude. Uh, we have been fortunate enough in the city um, to where we have been, even through the changes with the Affordable Care Act um, and, uh, and, and the different changes and regulations that have come into play with health care, we've been fortunate to keep it level as far as the cost to the employee. Um, now, the cost to the employer, um, has risen slightly, but that cost hasn't been shifted back to the employees as of yet. Um, and so one of the things that we're trying to do to combat that is like many other organizations, uh, the mayor has, is, is, a, is a huge advocate of wellness and healthy living. Um, and so um, through the, the city nurse, we have different lunch and learns that try and help pinpoint and target some of our biggest health conditions that are associated with city employees. It's the same big five for any employer. I don't care who you are. It's um, it's uh, diabetes, it's cholesterol, it's uh, hypertension, uh, heart disease. Mm -hmm. The same ones affect uh, obesity. Um, and so we bring in physicians that will come and supply lunch and, and um, we have a health fair annually where we provide free assessments to our employees to kind of get an idea on where they stand as well as provide them with the resources to improve uh, their state, which by and large will help reduce our cost for health insurance. That's that's a very long answer to say, yeah, we're doing all right. So welcome and good night. And um, this is Paul Kelly. He's our GIS coordinator. And my name is Trudy Nichols, and I'm the webmaster here at the city. See, I'm an introvert, and that's exactly what we do. We don't talk loud. That's why we stay behind the podium. <laughs> So we're here to, tonight to highlight some of the things that technology resources does. And these are just a few of our, of our um, areas that, uh, that we service. And we want to demonstrate how we are beneficial to you as residents and citizens, to visitors and to businesses within the city of Pensacola. Tonight we're going to highlight the city's website. We're going to look at, take a brief look at our new mobile app. We're going to look at City View, Pensacola 311, and our address lookup tool. 
Now, technology resources supports a lot of things for our city, which includes all of our hardware devices having to do with our network, such as router switches, stuff such as that. We also support software, like y'all have on your computers at home, Windows, Office. Also, enterprise applications. Now, some of these are only available internally to our staff. However, we do have a lot, such as the website, 311, and City View, that are accessible by our residents and, and by uh, members outside. Below that, we have a graphic task bar. Using this task bar, you can do things like pay your bill, visit Pensacola 311, view live and archived meeting videos, look at public records, or sign up for notifications. Now, what I'd like to do is, let's talk about the notifications for just a moment. As you may be able to see, Notify Me is our notification system, and it's the center graphic icon. Now, there are two ways that you can get to the Notify Me system. You can either go to cityofpensacola.com slash notify me, or again, through our graphic link there. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you feel that you have time to go to every website that you're interested in and see if something has changed or has been added or removed from the website? If you're like me, there's just not that much time. And Ab said that, that even if you went to a website, what if you're interested in one thing or another? Well, that's what Notify Me is all about. Notify Me sends you either email or text alerts based off of your interest. So, some of these include things like weather alerts or emergency alerts around the city of Pensacola, bid postings, news that comes from the office of the mayor or the PIO's office or our public information officer, calendar events, agenda postings, and more. There is a long list of things that you can sign up for, and what is great is that you can customize them based off of your interest. So below that is our Pensacola News and Events. Again, on the left-hand side, we have a banner that we highlight some of the events that are going on in the city of Pensacola. So right now, if you were to visit our site, you would see that we have Mom and Tots every second and fourth Friday. You'd see that PPD has a Relay for Life coming up. And you would see that there are videos for Moments with the Mayor. Among other things, that's just a few. But on the right-hand side, you'll see that there are actually three tabs. The first tab is News, and this is kind of a news reel, if you will. Think about kind of a Facebook feed of the news that's going on uh, in the city. The center tab is an event calendar, so that covers like things like our monthly cleanup, um, Palafox Market, Gallery Night, things like that. And then on the far side, oh. yeah. thank you, Judy. Thank you. <clears throat> so uh, one of the things that I'm going to be talking to you about this evening is our 311 system. So. Who in the room has used the City of Pensacola 311 system? Right, fantastic, a good number of folks. Well, I'm going to cover that and hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about that system, but also for the folks that are in the room and haven't used it, I want to really introduce it to you because it's a very powerful and great tool that we've got for connecting with citizens. You've got three different ways that you can connect. So on your phone, you can just dial 311 and you'll be in touch with city staff who can then either answer your question or maybe direct you to the staff that, that could help you with that issue. Uh, we also have 311 on the web and of course uh, you can get this on your smartphone as well. So what I've got highlighted there in the corner, if you're on the city of Pensacola's webpage and you're on the 311 site, 
Uh, if you have an Android phone or if you have an iPhone, you can go ahead and go and download that app and have that on your phone. If not, I hope to see all of you next week. I mean, that's it. That's the end. Of it. <laughs>